I really love the combination of working with the physical body and then working with you know, energetic, emotional, ancestral, all of those types of things as well. Womb Hara massage is, like, it's a really gentle, nourishing massage that works with like the abdomen and the pelvic bowl area. It can support with so many things, you know, different premenstrual symptoms, like you no know, period pain, cramps. It really just restores circulation and blood flow and energy to the womb space it helps to shift and clear a lot of stagnant energy whether that's like physical tension you know emotional energetic stuff that we're holding on to the energy of womb hara is so nourishing like it really creates this space of women can feel safe to like soften and be held it's it's working with the body to create the space for the body to release and let go as it's ready to Welcome to Wildflow Podcast with me, Charlotte Puanto. I'm an internationally award-winning menstrual cycle and embodiment coach, cycle mysteries guide, and founder of the First Moon Circle School of Menstrual Education for Children. Tune in for deep, heartfelt conversations with wisdom keepers, embodied leaders, and change makers on themes from cyclical living in flow with your menstrual cycle and body's wisdom. Reclaiming rites of passages to normalize period positivity for you and the next generation, and exploring our embodied experiences, soulful transformations, and intuitive wisdom guiding you to express and embody your full power in the change you want to see in the world. Are you ready? Let's flow. Alicia Rose Kruger is a holistic menstrual cycle coach and womb healing guide. She supports women in discovering the wisdom of their menstrual cycles and deepening into reverent relationship with their wombs. Alicia is passionate about teaching women how to align with their cyclical nature to enrich every area of their lives, including their physical health, emotional well-being, self-care rituals, spiritual practice, creative expression, and leadership. She also guides shamanic womb healing journeys for both groups and individuals and offers womb massage sessions on the Gold Coast of Australia. Alicia is a certified menstruality mentor, women's hormonal health coach, integrative womb hara massage therapist, holistic pelvic care practitioner and yoga teacher. She works with clients both online and in person. And this episode is just a really beautiful dive into the power of menstrual cycle awareness and womb wisdom and the multitude of ways that this work can support people's physical, emotional, spiritual, and creative vitality. We talked about Alicia's experience with heavy and really difficult periods as a 12-year-old and how she went onto the pill and then came off at age 20 and went on a healing journey and what worked for her and her advice for any mothers listening who might have similar um, children with similar experiences. We talked about what womb wisdom is and what it means to Alicia and how connecting to the wisdom of the womb and cycle supports Alicia in her life and her work. We talked about the body work that Alicia does, the womb hara massage and holistic pelvic care, how it works on the physical, emotional, energetic, and shamanic realms to help bring healing and releasing and so many benefits. How womb massage and healing can be a nourishing addition to the menstrual cycle awareness journey and the types of circumstances or or life stages or phases that we can be in when this practice can be particularly helpful. How womb hara massage can help support with ancestral healing and what to expect during a healing session, and also how to begin a simple self-massage practice at home. I really loved this conversation with Alicia, and I'm sure that you will too. Settle in and get ready for another beautiful episode. Let's flow. Welcome, Alicia, to Wild Flow Podcast. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for coming on. I'm really looking forward to chatting with you. Um, so let's start our conversation then with a cycle check-in, as we always do, just to orient to our 
our own cycles and uh, what's going on around us as well seasonally and cyclically. So I'll go first and then I'll invite you to to just share what feels true for you today. So for me, I'm on um, cycle day 25 um, of what's been between 28 and 30 days cycle uh, recently. Um, so I'm, I do feel like I'm in the last few days of, of this cycle and I can feel my energy dropping off. Um, but it, it's still there, but just that gentle winding in. Um, and I feel like I'm really looking forward to that uh, like quiet, still restful inward time, temple time when it comes. Um, after what's been a really busy cycle, it's just been um, like one of those that I could see coming that was going to be really busy and I was doing everything I could to make it not intense, but there were still parts that were intense because we had school holidays and sick children and um, it just kind of scuppered our plans for like ease and spaciousness and support. So we've just had to adapt and make do and get through the month what's been a, a really busy month anyway so I feel like that's going to be interesting to see how it it plays out when I um when I come to um to bleeding time and um yeah I think I'll just really need to lean into the extra rest when that comes so yeah feeling good otherwise calm and steady and happy and grounded and just like a gentle exhale is happening. It's just oh, softening. Um, and today while we're recording this, there's some things going on cosmically um, that I, I thought it would be cool to share. So in the Southern Hemisphere, it's um, it's the astrological day of in bulk, which is the um, halfway point between the winter solstice and the uh, spring equinox. So um, in bulk's that time where the days are starting to lengthen a little bit. And for me, it's, it's, I'm definitely noticing it's not dark so early and it, it feels quite like, oh, hopeful. I like that. It's nice. And the plants are just starting. I've got daffodils and hyacinths in the garden and they've grown their foliage, but the, the flowers aren't there yet. So it's like, it's, you know, it's coming. And it's really strangely, the first cherry blossoms are already, um, yeah, blossoming which doesn't normally happen here for another month, which is seems a bit alarming. I feel like it's a bit of a red flag as to what kind of summer we're going to have. Um, it just seems like everything's happening a bit earlier. I don't know if that's with you too. Um, and then the other thing just to share is that um, today it's the Lion's Gate portal. So I'm not an expert or anything in astrology, but I I, I do love it. Um, and so uh, today is is a is a day where there's a few things aligning. So there's a few stars uh, in alignment. So um, apparently it's um, Earth, um, Orion's Belt, and the star um, Sirius. And so it's this portal apparently that um, means that we can uh, expect rapid and accelerated uh, transformation and growth and um, there's, it's it's a portal into like actualizing ourselves um and an expanding uh yeah like in our in our personal selves um in our energetic selves as well so um i've just been like googling what what that is about because i've i've heard so much about it but don't didn't know too much so that's today so it's a, it's a bit cosmic at the minute um there's lots of things going on um, and the moon is in, uh, it's, it's reaching for a uh, third quarter today, which is the, um, the, the waning moon. It's the half moon. It's, um, halfway between full moon and the new moon. And so it's that time of letting go of what's not aligning for us. What's, um, what we're ready to, to release or what might be holding us back and just gently encouraging ourselves to, to let go of, of those things and so that we can make space for what's new or what we want to prioritize our energy with and, and grow in the new cycle when the moon is new next week. So yeah, there's a few things happening um, 
And that's where that's where I'm at. So Alicia, I'd love to invite you just to share like if you have a menstrual cycle where you're adding that and how that feels for you today. And just curious whether you resonate with any of the other cycles and seasons as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm on cycle day 20 today and my cycle is usually around 31 to 32 days. So I'm like three days post ovulation, very in that like late summer, inner autumn sort of time in my cycle, which for me is actually my favorite time in the cycle currently. I feel like it's such this beautiful, sweet spot where I'm starting to feel like that softening and that groundedness that I don't necessarily feel in summer because summer can be such a big energy. Um, and I, I tend to like get swept up in that quite easily. But as I transition into this late summer, early autumn phase, I've been feeling more grounded. I feel clearer. I feel like I can sort of take a step back and slow down and see things more clearly starting to feel like more creative and more intuitive and more of those autumn gifts but I've still got some of that like energy and momentum and focus still coming in from the summer and so for me it's a real sweet spot and um, I'm particularly excited actually to be in this phase of my cycle this week because I've had a cold for the last week you maybe still hear it a little bit in my voice but um See, so yeah, I was sick for my entire summer. And so I didn't get to like take advantage of that real high energy phase of my cycle. I was resting a lot. So I'm excited to be in this season where I'm I'm feeling like I've pretty much recovered, but I've still got some like gas in the tank and I can take care of some things that I'm really excited about. Um, so that's where I'm at in my cycle. But in terms of what you said about the the seasons and spring coming early this year. So I'm in Queensland, which is a different part of Australia to you, but I've absolutely noticed that this year. Like I think I noticed the cherry blossoms like four or five weeks ago when my parents were visiting. And um, the other thing that I noticed, which was like you said, alarming, that was the perfect word. Um, there are, there's a little pair of plovers, these two birds, which she comes, this is the second spring we've lived in this house. And last spring, they came and she laid her eggs in like the middle of a median strip around the corner from my house. And um, I wondered if they would be back again this year and they are. And so she's come and laid her eggs and Papa Bird is like prowling around protecting her. But they were about five or six weeks earlier than they were last year. Um, so yeah, I'm also also really noticing that spring feels very early this year, which you know it's exciting because it's nice to be done with winter and to feel that like re-emerging energy of spring and to see all the things starting to bloom in the garden but also like you said wondering what that means for um yeah the shifting cycles and what we're in for throughout the summer um so yeah I have mixed feelings about that also mm, yeah yeah I really feel like that I think that it's you know it, we can really notice what's that like climate change and in those swings between we have the El Nino and the La Nina weather patterns in Australia where La Nina is like the flood times and then El Nino is where we have like the bushfire times. And they said like normally there's some like we've just swung out of three years of 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 like such heavy rains and floods. And I'm sure you would have had that up in Queensland too. Mm-hmm. Um and and it's like normally you have a bit of a gap between you swing back to the opposite extreme, um, but not so. It's like it, we've just swung straight out of one into the other, and so yeah, it just feels like chaos in um in nature. Like she's really out of balance, and it's um yeah. I feel like I really echo what you feel like excited that you know the coldness of winter. It's like oh maybe we can you know get that warmth soon um and you know like look forward to all the joys of of spring and summer but also it's like no we really need the winter like it has a purpose it's not meant to be here it's it's kind of wrong so it's that tension between like excitement and hope versus like uh, it's like rushing out of the gate too soon so yeah we'll see what happens but yeah Mm. thank you for sharing as well and I really love what you said about your where you're at in your menstrual cycle and how you're like this is your sweet spot you really enjoy this time like post ovulation and I really know what you mean like for me that's a really lovely time too where everything kind of 
just chills a little bit, but it's still like that really like I have like buoyant energy and like joy and yeah, it's like it's like riding the wave kind of energy. And I can hear it in you as well, saying where you're at and then how you were sick before. And so like you're still getting to enjoy that summer energy, but like in a really nice, gentle way. Yeah. So yeah, yeah absolutely. I feel like the sweet spot of my cycle changes depending on what season of my life that I'm in. Um but overall, I think like throughout the years, this point in my cycle has probably like consistently been one of my favorites. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's a really interesting point too. Yeah, think about that, like where you're at in your life cycle as well. Yeah, cool. Um, Alicia, I'd love to invite you just to share with us um, and for people who don't know you, just who you are um, and, and what you do. And I guess following on from that too, like what brings you to do this? Like what's brought you to do what you do? Yeah, um, I would love to share. So um, I'm a holistic menstrual cycle coach and Womhara massage practitioner amongst various other things. Um, so I, what really sort of catalyzed this journey into being so interested in everything to do with um, like womb wisdom and the menstrual cycle was um, like initially I came off the pill when I was around 20 years, been on it for like eight years at that point. I was put on it really young um, because I had such debilitating periods. Like I was getting, you know, I would bleed for 10 days. I would have I would be vomiting. I would be home from school. And so, you know, like so many other women of that generation, I was just put on the pill as sort of a band-aid for all of those problems. And when I came off the pill when I was 20, they were all still there and exacerbated by seven or eight years of being on the pill. Um, And so like it was really just for my own personal healing journey that I started researching the cycle, trying to understand what was going on in my body, why I was experiencing such awful cycles um, and trying to figure out really like how I could fix it, how I could heal my own cycle because it had sort of taken over my whole life. It was really just being a cyclical being at that point in my life was a pretty horrendous experience, but I also knew that I didn't want to go back on birth control. So the only way out was really through. Um, And so I started with more of wanting to understand the physical aspects of the menstrual cycle and hormonal health, and then sort of went down the rabbit hole of how does that affect our emotions? How does that affect our creative energy? How can we work with the cycle and business and like how it really impacts every aspect of our life and well-being and I just couldn't get enough I just found it so fascinating and as I started to implement little like mindset changes or um, changes in the way that I approached things like at the time I was running my own business as a graphic designer and illustrator so like very creative job and being self-employed obviously had more agency around experimenting with different ways of working that would sort of suit my personal flow and so bringing menstrual cycle awareness into the way that I worked I found really transformative in terms of um I was experiencing more creative energy and also um able to like do the work that I love without burning out so often I'd really been stuck in the cycle of like yeah overdoing and burning out Um, So I started out with being fascinated by the menstrual cycle. I was also teaching yoga at the time as a side job. And um, I remember picking up Tammy Lynn Kent's book, um, Wild Creative, um, or Wild Feminine. I can't remember which book it was, but I picked up one of her books in the library. And um, that was my first introduction into sort of like the energetics of the womb space and womb wisdom. And I was just absolutely captivated by that book. And I started to implement some of the practices that she writes about in my own life. And it was just like, it was really transformative for me. And little did I know a few years later, I would end up going and training with her. Um, So yeah, it's really just sort of been this desire to like keep learning more and more about everything to do with um, the menstrual cycle and womb wellness. And that eventually led me to get into cycle coaching myself and become a um, holistic pelvic care practitioner through training with Tammy and then the Wormhara massage um, 
yeah, I just, I can't get enough. I just want to learn everything. And I love, I love teaching and sharing this work. Amazing. Thanks for sharing so much. Um, fascinated because I feel like so many of us come into this because of our own experiences. And I really resonate with what you were saying about going onto the pill and then coming off the pill and, you know, and how that like sends you on this journey into yourself, the self-healing and then, you know, following that as what you give back to the world as well. And I feel like that's, that's like so similar to my, my kind of path. And I'm just curious, just from um, what you were sharing about, you know, your debilitating periods that you had and as a, as a, um, you know, as a, a maybe teenager, maybe even a little bit younger from what you're saying when you first started your periods, um, and then they were they came back as well, just like that, and exacerbated when you came off the pill later. Was there anything in particular that just I'm just thinking of like anyone who's listening who's got like children maybe who are having similar like experiences? Was there anything that you would recommend to people to like like look into first for like supporting with that? Like what was it for you that really helped your cycle not be so awful? Hmm, interesting question. Um, oh, I don't know. Um, I think like, I don't remember too much about what it was like when I was like 11, 12, 13. Um, I do think that like, if I was parenting a daughter who was going through what I was going through, I just, I think generally we just have so much more of an awareness of the impact of things like, um, you know, diet on our hormones and, you know, general well-being um, or like, you know, working. I think probably the thing that was most transformative for me was starting to work with a naturopath who specialized in women's health. Um, before that, I'd really been trying to figure it out on my own through reading books and self-education. And at the time, like no one in my community was really doing anything in terms of holistic health or even seeing holistic or health alternative health practitioners. Um, so I didn't really know that was even an option. So like, yeah, I think my advice would be to go and see like a naturopath or someone who's more going to look at the whole picture of women's health, because I think the thing like we have to remember is that the, the menstrual cycle doesn't exist in isolation and like, it's not separate from the rest of our body and the rest of our lives, like everything, like there are so many things that we do in terms of like stress and diet and lifestyle habits and sleep and maybe like other things that are going on with our health. All of that is affecting the menstrual cycle. And if something is off, then the menstrual cycle is one of the first things to be affected. So it's really like if, if, the, if you're having difficulties with your menstrual cycle or it's really impacting your life, that's really to me, like a red flag that there are things that need to be addressed. Um, and I think, yeah, working with someone, so you're feeling like you're not alone in that. Um, that was probably the most transformative thing for me. Mm, thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate that, that insight for you. Mm. I and think um, that's such good advice. Yeah. I think the other piece is that, um, I wish someone had told me at the time, like, this is absolutely like not going to be your experience forever. I think I'd grown up hearing from my mom and my grandmother, like that they'd had similar experiences. So I thought it was really just like my genetic lottery for a long time. And I never would have imagined that I would get to the point where, you know, I wouldn't have crazy PMS. I wouldn't have period pain and I could really just enjoy my cycle. So having that reminder that, you know, being in pain and discomfort and feeling, um, you know, feeling like you're, kind of losing the plot for most of your cycle like that's not a normal experience and that's not something that you have to just tolerate it is something that you can change with the right support mm, that's gorgeous wisdom I think that's something that I hear so much of as well it's that we just grow up we get to our you know that time of puberty and we just think we're going to inherit whatever our mothers and grandmothers and sisters and aunties had and often it seems that, you know, we do, these things are inherited and we do go down these paths. So I think that's a really beautiful reminder that, you know, support can help us to change that experience. Um, and there's plenty, especially nowadays that we can do to, 
to look into that. So thanks so much, Alicia. I'm sure that's going to be really helpful for people listening. So you're really into um, like womb wisdom and like really connecting to the wisdom of your cycle and your body to support you in um, your life and your work. And as you were saying, to really like uh, work with that and fl- find your flow with that. And I'm really interested just to hear like what has been um, like, like how, how do you connect into that for you? Like what is womb wisdom and how do you connect into your womb's wisdom? Mm-hmm. I think that's such a multi, like a multifaceted question. Um, I think primarily for me, practicing menstrual cycle awareness is the way that I connect to my womb's wisdom just on a daily basis. Um, I think connecting in with where I'm at in my cycle and having an understanding of how that affects the way that I feel, um, and you know what my what my needs are and how that affects my energy and capacity and my strengths and the challenges that I might be experiencing that day that really has provided for me like an interior map that helps me live in a way that really like both honors my body and nourishes my feminine spirit and helps me be more fully expressed and feel like more fulfilled in my life um so that's very much a daily practice that feels quite like second nature to me at this point, I've been practicing it for like quite a long time. Um, and then like, I, I think like other practices, like for example, like self womb massage or womb steaming or, um, you know, doing a meditation practice where I connect in with my womb, those wouldn't necessarily be on a daily basis, but sort of, you know, a few times throughout the month that would help me connect in in a more intentional way where I have more time maybe there's something specific that I want to focus on um and then probably the other thing that I think is a really um has been sort of a mainstay of my practice has been carving out time for some stillness and dreaming in my inner winter during my period because not only does that help me like rest and replenish so that I can flourish more throughout the rest of my cycle but that's also the time for me, like so many others where I have like more direct access to that intuitive, um, insightful, sometimes like shamanic type space where I can vision and dream and really drop into that liminal, um, that liminal space where I can feel like I can plug kind of directly into my womb and get like different ideas and visions and clarity around like what my next steps are going to be. So that, um, that monthly ritual is definitely a non-negotiable for me. And I think that's one of the things that's had the biggest impact on how I run my business and live my life with a lot more intention and in a way that feels a lot more aligned to like my purpose than what I was doing previously. Beautiful. Love the mix of rituals and practices that you've got there, like the everyday and then the ones you sprinkle throughout. And yeah, I, I really love the um the way you described like dropping into your like your your womb and that visioning, like with your period and um into those shamanic realms and and like the way you described how it brings more intentionality to what you're doing. I say, like, yes, that's a beautiful way of, of explaining it. I really relate to that too. That's something that I love to do and I feel like I can really tap into it um, if I can slow down enough. It's like that's the that's the trick for me. It's like if if life and children particularly keep trying to sway me out of that space, it's like uh, I get a bit cranky. It's like I have to I really want to prioritize that time, too. It's lovely. So, yeah, I love Mm. hearing that that's something you love to do as well. Yeah. And it doesn't. um you know, like, yes, it is lovely if we can take a whole day off on day one or two of our cycle. And I personally don't have children, so that's a little bit easier for me, but I don't, I don't always do that. Like, I think like that practice of making space to just drop in when you're bleeding can be like 20 minutes. And I think sometimes we can overcomplicate things. Like there are so many, um, I definitely got swept up in this initially when I started practicing menstrual cycle awareness, where I would try and take a day off on day one or two of my cycle 
And I would almost have this like period self-care checklist where I think I've got to pull cards, I've got to journal, I've got to do some yin yoga, I've got to, you know, get outside in nature. And I I wasn't actually relaxing or surrendering into that space of deep rest. And so I wasn't feeling the way that I thought that I wanted to feel. And I've I've come to realize now that what I actually need, particularly on the first two days of my bleed, is space where I can just do nothing, even if that's 20 minutes. And for me, like my favorite is like just going to lie down like on my bed or in bed and I'll put on some like classical music or something and just let my mind drift and my body relax. Like it's not a structured meditation. It's just letting myself soften and receive and letting the mind wander and like the, yeah, just the way that I'll like energetically we're primed on those first two days of the cycle. If I didn't really need to do a lot to drop in, like if I let myself just have space, that's when the the insights are going to come in. And then obviously the added bonus of allowing your body to lie down and do nothing, even if it's for a short space of time, that's deeply restful and replenishing, um, much more so than like binge watching a show or like reading a book, which I mean, I'm guilty of that at times as well as a distraction, but um, yeah, it doesn't need to be a structured practice or meditation. It can literally just be like lying down. You can put on a timer for however much time you have and just allow the mind to wander wherever it wants to. Mm, Wise words. Mm. Yeah. I, I hear you on that. I think that it, I've definitely witnessed um myself and others really sort of go well like you know there's all these rituals like there's so many beautiful things you could do you know to honor that part of your cycle but for me it's like I actually just need the deep rest as well and just to literally zone out and you know maybe even just just nap um but like not do otherwise we're still like you say we're still not actually resting we're just replacing it with doing something else and then like maybe for me, like like a little ritual or like some jour- journaling or journeying can come like, you know, later, like days, you know, three, four or something after I've had that chance to just stop. And if I don't stop, then yeah, all hell can break loose. It's like, you know, you just need that circuit breaker of just that rest time. And I think that's really um, a beautiful reminder to everyone to to not overcomplicate these things and it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be, you know, a a day. Like you say, I find it's, if I can get like an hour, you know, maybe even two hours, that would be like really lovely. Um, So, cause I I normally start my period at the weekends. It just seems to be that way at the minute. And so, you know, they're busy days in my house. So it's it's, uh, just creating a bit of space around that as much as I can. So yeah, thank you for sharing. I love what you said about um, that time being a circuit breaker. And I think that I absolutely agree with that. Like, yes, those practices like journaling and visioning and maybe like mapping out the coming cycle, just like you said, like, I think energetically those feel more aligned, like day three, four, five, six, when that energy is starting to reemerge and we feel that like, there's an, like a natural motivation to start wanting to do more again. Um, but the day one and two are such a still energy. It's, re- it's a real energy of like letting go, almost like that dark moon before the new moon starts to return. And I think we so often forget that part of any cycle. We can't just like end one cycle and race into like doing the next thing. We actually need that pause where there's like emptiness or there's a void where we can just integrate and rest and receive and like then we move to doing the next thing yeah yeah that's I love that like you say with the dark moon and the new moon like you have to it has to let's just like fade out like you have to have nothing like that yeah that's darkness that stillness that inwardness that just pause and then we can grow from there yeah I love that um, so I'd love to hear more about, you said one of the rituals that you do is is like self-womb massage. And I'd love to hear more about this. I'm not um, a body worker in any way and I don't have um, experience with womb massage and I'm really interested to learn more about it from you. So you do a couple of types of, of body work that I'm aware of. And I'd just love to hear about 
what that is and like why this is something that you uh like what the benefits of it are like why you why you um why you offer this and why you do it for self-practice too yeah so um at the moment I'm offering womb hara massage I am trained in holistic pelvic care and I did offer that for a number of years I'm not offering that currently just because I'm in a season of my life where I, I can't do everything and um yeah I had to prioritize a little bit but um the Wim Hara massage. So I trained with, um, it's Natalie Zuckerman from the Institute of Feminine Arts here on the Gold Coast. She created this modality, which is so beautiful. Um, and the reason I got into body work initially was because like through cycle coaching, obviously you're working with a lot of people who are experiencing painful periods or, um, you know, various premenstrual challenges going through fertility journeys, um, healing from like, you know, all sorts of things. Um, you know, we've, uh, most of us have been through some kind of transformative or traumatic womb experiences throughout our lifetimes. And, um, yeah, I just, I was learning a lot and experiencing a lot around how the pelvic bowl and the womb and the body not only holds like physical tension, but holds so much energetically and emotionally. And I wanted to be able to offer something that would support with that aspect of it. Um, And so initially it was holistic pelvic care, which is a sort of a combination of um, energy work and like internal vaginal massage. So working with the pelvic floor, um, which I absolutely loved offering in that like really taught me so much about working with energy and everything I've learned about like energetic womb work um, because uh, holistic pelvic care was a lot of like guiding, like almost like shamanic vision journeys in conjunction with doing the massage. Um, and so that piece of it, I bring into my womb hara massage because I really love the combination of working with the physical body and then working with energetic emotional ancestral all of those types of things as well um so Wim Hara massage is like it's a really gentle nourishing massage that works with like the abdomen and the pelvic bowl area so the massage itself includes um the back specifically like the lower back and sacrum the back of the pelvic bowl the glutes around the tailbone And then on the front of the body, we're really working with the whole soft part of the belly. So around the diaphragm, up under the ribs, like the whole digestive system, um, down to like the womb and the ovaries and the lower belly. And it's, you know, it can, it can support with so many things, um, you know, different premenstrual symptoms, like, um, you know, period pain, cramps, if women are having like spotting or difficulties with their periods, Um, it really just restores circulation and blood flow and energy to the womb space. It helps to shift and clear a lot of stagnant energy, whether that's like physical tension or, um, you know, emotional energetic stuff that we're holding on to. Um, it can support with, um, like healing scar tissue, um, endometriosis, fibroids, cysts, um, you know, preconception, postpartum care perimenopause, menopause, healing from like different kinds of trauma, whether that's birth trauma, um, miscarriage, abortion, sexual trauma, things like that. Um, but I just find that the energy of Wumhara is so nourishing. Like it really creates this space of where, where women can feel safe to like soften and be held. It's so, um, yeah, it's really gentle and it's really, it's working with the body to create the space for the body to release and let go as it's ready to. Um, and then, you know, most women have never had their their belly touched or massaged. It's a space that's not really included in regular massage. Like I've definitely never had anyone massage my abdomen in a regular massage. And, um, you know, we can hold so much tension there, like in the womb space, yes, but also the digestive system, you know, it supports with digestive difficulties, um, you know, feeling like our breathing and our diaphragm is really stuck. Um, when we massage the belly, we're also supporting the nervous system, like the vagus nerve. 
And so it's really multifaceted in the way that it can um, like support us and the benefits that it can provide. So yeah, it's it, the massage. And then I tend to combine that with the, the energy work and even sometimes like um, guiding visualizations and the more shamanic journeys, like where it's appropriate and where it's aligned with that person's particular intentions. Wow. It sounds incredible. Sounds really special. And I can just imagine oh, how beautiful it would be. I'm really like, I want to have a go. Like I've never had a, I've never had a treatment and it sounds really beautiful. Like working on those multiple layers and, and different realms. And like you say, like, yeah, I've never had my belly touched either or massaged. And I can just imagine how like all of those parts of our bodies, um, how that can just support so much with with moving energy and releasing. And you said about like supporting the body to release when it's ready to. I um, just had a question pop into my mind as I was listening. And I just wondered simply whether there's um, an optimal time of the menstrual cycle to have this kind of treatment or like, would you go when you had your period or like beforehand, like in the premenstrual phase or, or anytime? Is there a difference? Um... And it, so there are some like general contraindications for Wimhara. So if you are actively trying to get pregnant or you think you might be pregnant, you wouldn't want to have the massage like after ovulation, if there's a chance that you could be pregnant, just because we don't want to like disrupt the nest if there is a chance of conception. Um, and like for women who have really heavy or painful periods, like you might want to avoid getting a massage like during your period or like the day or two before just because it can sometimes make the period heavier. So if that's something that you're already struggling with, you might want to, you know, might not want to intensify that. Um, so like whether or not you have it during your period is just a personal preference really. Um, yeah, I don't, um, I think you can have it really at any time in the cycle that you feel guided to unless there's like a particular physical reason why you might not want to. Mm. yeah beautiful I love that I think that's part of like I guess forming your intention for where you're coming and noticing where you're, you know what's going on for you where you're at in your life and, and what's you know whether you are trying to conceive or, or not but yeah it sounds like a very special modality as well and um you know is that something that you recommend people have regularly or just as and when they think they need it yeah, so usually um, I would recommend, like, I, you I mean, it depends on the reason why you're coming. If you were just coming because you wanted to like, generally release some tension and you wanted to feel more connected to your womb, maybe one session is enough. If you're coming because you're, um, you know, on a fertility journey or you are wanting to support your body because you're having really um, disruptive periods or um, like intense premenstrual symptoms or you know you're healing scar tissue or you're moving through um, you know some kind of trauma or something um, usually then in that case I would recommend like minimum of two or three sessions because we definitely don't want to come in with the mindset that I'm going to try and fix everything in one session like we just want to work with the body to create the connection and create that space where the body can start to shift gently and slowly like we definitely don't want to rush or feel like we're forcing any kind of outcome um so yeah usually initially when people work with me it's somewhere between two to two to four sessions um and then you know coming back like if there's a need, like maybe some kind of challenge arises or you feel like you're holding a lot of tension in your abdomen or you're going through a time of transition or stress where you feel like you need that extra support, um, moving through a season like you're preparing for pregnancy or, you know, you're postpartum and you're wanting some like care and support there. Um, so, yeah, initially it's usually a few closer together and then sort of as needed depending on what's going on. Um, but I like to get them like every like three to four months or so, I feel like a, a few times a year, even when I'm feeling like everything's good, I'm surprised usually at how much tension is collected. Yeah, yeah, amazing. 
And I'm really interested as well. I'd love to hear um, your your thoughts on, um, you mentioned like ancestral like patterns and tensions and things that we we hold on to. Could you just share with us a bit about like how that's, like what you mean by that and then how that's stored in the body? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the womb particularly. Yes. Um sorry to put you on the spot there. No, just that's really okay. interested. There's just like uh it's there's a lot that I could say. And so I'm just trying to think of where I where I want to start. Um mm. so I think um I mean we can hold imprints from like any of our ancestors. I think particularly for women, it's often like more commonly from our female ancestors, especially through the mother line um, or even like imprints from our own like birth experience, our experience of conception and being in the womb and like birth. Um, So, I mean, there are different sorts of ways we can work with often when um, like I really encourage when women come in and we're working with massage, like my advice is always to stay really present with the body and notice what comes up. Like often we don't even need to have a specific intention around physical, uh, around ancestral healing. Although sometimes that is the intention. Sometimes someone will come in and say, you know, this is going on in my relationship with my mother. Like I would like mm-hmm. to see what comes up around this, but sometimes just when we're working with the body and we're paying close attention to what sensations we're experiencing what emotions are coming up maybe different images or memories or things that will arise just through working with the body often things are cleared that way um so like sometimes it's it's I'm not going to say easy but sometimes it happens naturally in that kind of way and sometimes it's more intentional where if someone has this specific um like a specific relationship or experience or imprint that they want to work around I'll guide them through like a visualization like healing or clearing process that's more tailored to what their specific intentions are um so yeah I mean I've had I had some pretty like profound experiences with seeing what clients work through sometimes ancestral healing is not even on their radar but they'll come in and um like we'll get into energetically working with like one of the ovaries, for example, and the kind of the rabbit hole we go down ends up leading to an ancestral imprint from like a great, great grandfather or something. And then we can, when we can clear that all of a sudden the physical tension that was really stubborn, just absolutely like releases and let's go. Um, wow. Yeah. Ancestral, like the ancestral healing in the, the, the energetic imprints that that leaves um I think it's one of the most fascinating aspects of body work for me I think it's a really interesting it can show up in so many ways and it can be so unexpected in the way that it manifests in the physical body um yeah I don't know if that answers your question but... oh it does yeah thank you so much for sharing that I think it's absolutely fascinating and I'm really interested in it from a you know, from a rites of passage point of view, like the way that we experience, you know, for example, like our childhood and then our first periods and then our cycle experiences, you know, it's so shaped by not just our lived experiences, but the experiences of the women in our lineage before us. But, you know, everybody who's been before us and carved the way and, and like, you know, the legacy that we're inheriting and, um, and I, and I know that we can store all this as energy in our body. And I was just so interested to hear like how that comes out in like how you can access that and release that in a, in a massage point of view. I think that's just wonderful, like really, um, really special um, to be able to, to access that and, you know, help people to, to release it and, you know, maybe come into a new relationship with their body and, and themselves and, you know, maybe the mothers and, you know, the ancestors before as well. So it's fascinating mm. to to hear, um, hear about. Think, Thank you. Yeah, I think the one thing I just want to add is um, my experience has been in the feedback that I've had from clients, both through doing holistic pelvic care and womb hair massage, is that there's something about the 
physical touch and being held in a space by someone that allows easier access um, to like what's going on energetically or emotionally. Whereas like, you know, I could do the same visualization with someone just like lying there and guiding them through the visualization versus guiding them through that visualization while working with the physical body through the power of touch. And it's like the the experience is just so much deeper when we combine it with the physical touch. There's something about it, just the combination of working energetically and physically at the same time. Um, yeah, can really shift and unlock things. Yeah, mm. quicker than just working energetically by itself. Mm. Wow. Amazing. Um, and you've said that you know this is something that people can try themselves at home and create a pra- you know, their own sort of self-massage practice. How would somebody start to do that? Um if you've never had it before or got no experience before. And I'm just curious as well, is this, do you think this is like a gentle way in if someone sort of wanted to see somebody, but wanted to um, maybe get comfortable with, you know, touching these parts of our bodies that aren't normally touched? Mm. Um, What would your advice be? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think we should all be touching our own bodies. Um, I think massaging your own your own belly is a really beautiful practice. No matter where you are on your journey, if you're completely new to connecting with your cycle in your womb, or you've been doing this for a long time, um, so where you would start? Um, so you'd want to get some kind of like oil or balm that you can massage with. I really love um, like shea butter is my favorite organic shea butter. Um, but you can use like coconut oil, or even like organic castor oil or olive oil, anything, um, you know, probably you've got something in your pantry that you could use. Um, and then I would just start with like, you know, when you're massaging and you can you're putting your fingertips in your belly and just making some like really gentle circles and kind of moving over your whole abdomen and noticing just what's there. Like, where are you feeling tension? Where are things feeling stuck or tender? Um, you know, noticing, for example, like the changes in temperature in your skin, like as some parts of your belly cold to touch or as others feel warm, for example, and really starting to just be present and pay attention. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's a lot simpler than people think. I think generally like like really gentle circular massaging motions are a really great place to start. Um, so if you're doing bigger circles on the belly, you always want to be moving in a clockwise direction just because that supports digestion. Um, yeah, I think you can't really go wrong with some self massage. Just, yeah, start by noticing what's there, what sensation, the temperature. And again, like I said earlier, noticing as you're massaging, what sensations are you experiencing in terms of, is there some kind of emotion that's coming up? Is there something that pops into your mind when you're massaging a certain point and you don't need to necessarily understand what the connection is or why something is there or even, you know, do anything with that. It's just trusting that, you know, that might be something that your body is bringing up to let go of or shift um, and that what you're doing with the gentle physical touch is all you need to be doing in that moment. Mm, Beautiful. That sounds really lovely and like a really easy way in for someone who's really curious about having a, a deeper connection to that part of their body. And I think you've, yeah, there's lots in there that, like you said, it's simple and just listening and beautiful. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And just by um, just by using that touch and bringing warmth, like you're increasing blood flow and you're increasing circulation. So mm-hmm. even if it's a short practice or you're not really sure what you're doing, your body's mm-hmm. still going to receive some benefits from that. Yeah. Yeah. And like you say, just from touching that part of your body and, you you know, even if you're not really sure what you're doing, but just bringing some awareness and some love to to -hmm. that part. That's yeah. Beautiful. And so where can people um, like find you, Alicia? You're in Queensland. So if anyone wanted to come for a treatment, how can people like um, connect with you and, and reach out? 
Yeah, so I am in Eleonora on the Gold Coast. I have a little home clinic that I practice out of. So if you happen to be local, I would love to meet you. Um, and if you're not local, I know there are um, Wim Hof massage practitioners all over Australia. So I'm sure that you would be able to find someone that was close to you. Um, and um, yeah, all my cycle coaching and like energy work I can do online via Zoom as well. So I work with clients that way. Beautiful. Thank you. And what was your Instagram? Are you on Instagram at the minute? I am. So my Instagram is just um, Alicia Rose Kruger and then my website is aliciarosekruger.com. So easy to find. Easy, yeah. And I'll pop it all in the show notes. And I'd just like to ask a closing question and just invite you to share with us and drop into what's the greatest thing that uh, connecting to your body's wisdom has gifted you? Hmm. Um, I think I would have to say sovereignty and what I mean by that is like I have such a, a reverence for my body now and a deep trust in my own wisdom and a feeling of being like centered within myself that I really didn't have before I started this practice like I feel like I think back to being like 19, 20, I was constantly looking outside myself, like, how should I eat? How should I exercise? How should I run my business? Um, and like very much outsourcing my power and my wisdom. Mm. And um, I didn't have a particularly loving relationship with my body. Whereas now I just feel like I have such a reverence for my body. I feel so in awe of her and how she works and her wisdom. And um, yeah, I feel very connected to my own like power and creative energy and intuition. And there's like a confidence and like so many gifts that come with that, that I'm just really grateful for. So yeah, sovereignty, I would Mm. have to say. That's amazing. So powerful. I really feel that. Like I feel that too for myself. It's really relate to what you're you're saying about turning inwards for for wisdom and guidance and, and not outwards. And it's something that's come with maturity, but also very much like mostly down to um listening to my body and working with the cycles and yeah just tuning inwards in that way um so that's beautiful yeah I really relate to that thank you so much Alicia I've absolutely loved chatting with you and hearing more about your amazing work and um yeah everybody you can go and find Alicia and uh, practice your uh, womb massage if you would like to. Otherwise, you can reach out for some uh, massage with her as well if you're around the Gold Coast or fancy a trip to the Gold Coast. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. I've so enjoyed our conversation. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks so much for listening to Wildflow. I love having you here. If you're loving this podcast, why not leave a rating and review and share your favorite episodes with those you think would love to listen. And if you share on Instagram, tag me at charlotte.ponto.coach. To take the next step in your own journey of learning how to live, love and lead and flow with your cyclical nature and for deeper guidance and support in your cycle embodiment journey, you can discover my freebies and join my Wild Flow Coven, my new Cycle Wisdom membership, or even discover my group programs, private cycle coaching and courses all on my website at charlottepronto.com. Until next time, go well with the flow of your body's cyclic nature.